drink beer. Think beer. You're listening to Brood Bloods. Brood Bloods, episode 128. This is like our 15th try to make the show this year. 2810 has been cursed for us so far. If it's not internet outages, then it's uh, dogs barking. And- or 2018, not 2810. We haven't quite Whatever. advanced that far into the future. Another part of the curse. We're back. <laughs> Dustin's back on the show. Back and bruised in the news. That's what we're covering today. Something we haven't done in a while, but we want to get back to doing. So just in the effort of uh, full transparency, uh, because we, you know, our investors expect that we are fully transparent in <laughs> all of our uh, operations. That uh, we decided we're going to try to do some standalone news episodes. So many investors that we have, you know. We have we have all of ones of investors, which are mostly just you and I shelling out money and not getting anything in return, other that's than true. the emotional support of Johnny B and a few others. What that's worth something. Uh, yeah, there's something to be said for emotional bucks. Doesn't pay the bills. Doesn't pay our server bills, but uh, <laughs> it, it it pays the emotional bills. It, it fills your heart with love, though. That's the important part. Who everybody needs love and validation, and that's why we're here putting out <laughs> another episode. That's true. For love and validation. So let's get right to the news. Uh, Stone, the big news this week, and Johnny B sent us this, and we, he actually sent it to us like right after we tried to record yesterday, right when your internet went out right. for like the third time. Uh, but yeah, the big news this week, of course, is that Stone Brewing out of San Diego is suing Miller Coors. Uh, last week, founder Greg Cook, and by the way, I wish the Cook and Cokes, he is not of the Coke family. He's a cook, but they spell their name the last the same way. I wish these Germans would figure out how to say their last names. Uh, you of the German heritage need to figure this out because this is ridiculous. I need to get all the Germans I, together and try to come to uh, one agreed upon pronunciation. Yes. Learn how to pronounce. Is it Cook or Coke or is it Cock? Figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sick of this. Uh, but uh, he is not one of the evil Coke brothers. He's a Cook brother. And uh, he just he teased last week on his Twitter account that there was some big fight coming for Stone and nobody knew what it was. And he basically teased that it was going to be them kind of punching above their weight class. And then on Monday, they announced through a press release, uh, Stone Brewing did, that they have decided to sue Miller Coors because of Keystone Light. And you say, well, Keystone Light's been around forever. And it has. That, uh, that is true. You know, that, that football alcohol water has been around for <laughs> decades. Dave Matthews and, Band, you know, it, it's that yeah, whole crowd too. Anybody who's a fan of Dave Matthews Band knows how much they uh, they are also fans of Keystone Light. True. So they are specifically – they have a dispute over the name Stone, the Stone part of Keystone, because Miller Coors, I guess I'm not. I don't keep up with the Keystone legacy. You usually um, do. I, I, I don't have a key. I have a Lone Star blog. I don't have a Keystone blog. <laughs> I thought you had a Keystone Journal and a Lone Star blog, but I could, no, I could no, be getting that backwards, mixed up. backwards. Okay. Um, I haven't kept track of their cans designs, but apparently, at least on the latest can design, it just says Stone on it uh, without the key part. And well, it, you know, it, it I think the letters. key part is there, but it's just tiny. It's like tiny is on the – yeah, if you rotate the can around, the key is there, but it's like tiny key, gigantic stone. Okay. So that's that's what they're suing over because I presume that Stone Brewing owns the trademark to Stone Brewing and probably Stone Beers, I, I would guess. And they've decided to uh, file a lawsuit over that in the U.S. District of Southern California. Uh, Greg – Greg Cook, not cock, not coke, had this to say. We believe that Miller Coors is intentionally and deliberately trying to create confusion in the marketplace with their Keystone brand. And that is why we're suing them. You can see it in their cans. You can see it in their packaging. You can see it in their marketing. They are being surprisingly bold with this. This is really disconcerting to hold this. It says stone light. Two words that you would never see together in association with our company. They've been incredibly bold with their approach of just um, with their marketing. uh, Grab life by the stones, a stone this and stones that. And sometimes they'll put a little apostrophe in front of stones. But the bottom line is, as you can see very clearly, They are trying to just line this up and and push the word stone. Hey, in the world of beer, the name stone is ours. Yeah, so you can also see through all the other advertising that he points out in this article or in this uh, video that even though the can does have the key part on there, um, they're basically saying grab a stone and they're, they're focusing on just the word stone in all of their ads. So it is pretty blatant. Yeah, and 
in their defense, I will say that, and this is probably this probably was not a Miller Coors um, original creation, but I mean, when I was growing up, they were always referred to as Stones, not necessarily uh, Keystone Light. I think uh, my boss is the only one that fully refers to it as a Keystone Light uh, when he talks about drinking it. Um, I guess I've always heard it called drinkers to know that. Yeah, well, I I am rich with Keystone drinkers uh, in my social circles. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, who that's I surround myself with. Only. For sure, that's a <laughs> that's a that's a point to note. Yes, but I mean they've always been called stones, so I can see why Miller Coors would have adopted that as you know nomenclature. Uh, but I can also see where Stone has probably some legal ground to stand on, and why they would want to differentiate. Obviously, I want to see. I know why they want to differentiate themselves from True. Keystone Light. Makes sense. Well, I just think it's funny, you know, he points out in that video that um, you would never see the words stone and light together on, on a can. And yes. Of course you wouldn't. Miller Coors spokesman Marty Maloney uh, denied the allegations, called it a publicity stunt, a, a clever publicity stunt, and said, quote, since Keystone's debut in 1989 prior to the founding of Stone Brewing in 1996, our consumers have commonly used stone to refer to the Keystone brand, and we will let the facts speak for themselves in the legal process. He wrote via email. Couldn't even bother with a spoken word statement. Um, I can understand where Stone is coming from. I can under- I can see both sides of this, but since I'm guessing Miller Coors does not own the Stone trademark, I'm guessing they don't have a lot of legal ground to stand on. No, I don't think they have any to stand on. I'm quite sure that Stone's probably going to win this, in all honesty. I'd be surprised. I think they have a lot of standing here. I, and they can't even... You know, my other thought was maybe they'd argue that they don't know every small brewery that's ever existed and blah, blah, blah. But, you know... It would be hard to argue the fact that they didn't know Stone exists. It's one of the biggest craft breweries going. Everybody knows Arrogant Bastard. I, I guarantee people at Budweiser and Miller know know about Stone. Well, another depressing news, uh, Green Flash. Uh, we're like a month late on the story, but that's because we have not been recording as regularly as we did in prior years, and that's our fault. But Johnny B sent us this story last month, and we just have not reported on it. But in depressing news, uh, Green Flash, also off from the uh, West Coast, uh, they have announced that they are laying off 15% of their staff and they are pulling distribution from 32 states. Uh, because of craft Texas comp- is not on that list, though. They will still be well, here. Fortunately, yes. Yeah. Uh, this is all due to, no surprise, craft competition. Uh, there is a lot of competition around the United States, and they had hoped to become a heritage brand and have beer in all 50 states, but that did not work out too well. I think they probably expanded too late for that to be the case. Uh, they probably needed to expand a lot earlier uh, to make that happen. Yeah, probably um, so. they, The only states they will now distribute to will be Arizona, California, Colorado, Hawaii, Nebraska, Texas, Utah, Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, and Virginia. You know, Everybody I'm kind of else is screwed. I'm, I'm kind of surprised they're keeping Hawaii on that list. I feel like the shipping cost out there would have been, you know, it would have been cheaper to distribute to, like, Oregon or Washington, which is really weird to me. I mean, Green Flash is California, right? So it it's, yeah, it seems yeah. a little odd not to go there, but still to go to Hawaii. But whatever. Well, I'm guessing they said they decided to the way they just, the states they decided to pull out of um, was all dependent on performance. So I'm guessing. I guess maybe that makes sense. Hawaii is Oregon's well. so saturated. Saturated. Yeah. So I guess that makes sense. Well, as as we know firsthand, uh, Hawaii is not saturated. With crap no, here. they are not. <laughs> not at all. You know, Texas is getting close, though. I I figure it we're is. probably on the list somewhere of an option to be pulled out of. I'm surprised we were on that list, honestly. Yeah. I, I really am. But, uh, well, good luck, Green Flash. Um, they decided that they, uh, they are going to kind of refocus on smaller markets, as they're calling them, earlier stage markets. And they're going to be opening up some small brew pubs in markets like Nebraska that will be devoted to their beer. And they're going to see how they perform there. And maybe they can reopen in some of those states or push more uh, to those earlier stage markets. I'm sorry, Nebraska was not one of those, but anyways. Uh, and so you may see a green flash brew pub near you. If you, <laughs> if they're pulling the beer out of your state, you never know. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Yeah. I think the trying to become a heritage brand this day and age, man, that's going to be just, that's, that's going to be really, really tough. Yeah, I agree. That, I mean, everything's so well established beyond just, um, you know, other ones coming in from other states. Uh, so many states, like we've said so many times, have so many locals as well. So there, there's a lot of stuff to compete with. And I think probably in some respects, not that Green Flash makes bad beer, but I think probably 
the craft consumer probably rebels a little bit against the the heritage brands. I mean, I think you've even seen that with Stone, um, with the declines in sales, uh, you know, domestically, and why they pulled back some of their labels and stuff like that and laid off some people last year. That's true. Uh, I I think people are rebelling against the heritage brands. They, as we've talked about many times, people want the new hotness, so they're going to seek out the latest and greatest micro brew as opposed to drinking something of a heritage nature. But, and somehow though, it's odd because I I feel like founders and bells both get, I mean, people like those and embrace them, but a lot of these heritage brands, they don't, it's something about those two that people still love. It's interesting. Yeah. But founders also isn't in all 50 States yet. So they've still got a long ways to go before they are in all 50 States. No, they're not. I mean, they're not and bells isn't either in all 50, but, I mean, those are quote unquote the big guys, you know, and people <laughs> still do seem to embrace them. Even, even in, I'm just thinking like DFW, for example, we seem to get every variant of Bells. Uh, and, you know, with Ninkasi, like we talked about before, that fell off pretty fast. But mm-hmm. everything is coming in from Bells. I know Bells is a much bigger name than Ninkasi was, but still, um, in the saturated market that we live, um, they, they're still getting embraced, which I think is interesting. Yeah. I, I guess it's because maybe those two breweries still have a little bit of mystique around them, like with Hop Slam. For Bells, uh, the KBS, the CBS for Founders. I don't know that. I mean, I maybe they do, and we just don't get those beers. But I can't recall the last sort of uh, highly valued beer from Stone that people were clamoring for. Like yeah. people are going to line up around the block for some one of their beers. I'm not saying they make bad beer; they make a really good beer. But I just can't recall one of those. Like, where's their Three Floyds Dark Lord? You know, or yeah. Uh, I, I think, and same thing probably goes for Green Flash. And maybe we just don't get those beers here. That's entirely possible. We're not aware of them. Uh, but I think Founders is able, especially with their whole barreling caves, the back caves, you know, they're able to maintain some of that mystique. So That's true. And then you have Bells that always has two hearted on, you know, best IPAs in the nation and stuff like that. So right. they do have those rep- those reps that the other ones don't. Uh, yeah, Stone, maybe like the Enjoy Buy series or something. People. Uh, they don't line up for it, but they might be like, well, let me grab that before uh, this date. Yeah. And it's a little bit of a push, but yeah, I, I agree. I, I can't think of like a, a major stone release that everybody's just super excited about. Exactly. So there's always, <laughs> we've got two health stories this week. There's, it seems like every other week there's some story about either alcohol gives you cancer or alcohol helps the body uh, in some way. Uh, just like with we coffee. Got two stories this week. Yeah. Everything causes cancer and everything cures you of cancer. So, uh, just do everything in moderation, and you'll probably probably be okay. You'll probably get cancer, but you'll probably be okay also. <laughs> There's a 50% chance you're going to get cancer or be okay. So just roll with it. Just roll with the dice. Right. And, uh, smoke a little meth while you're at it. But uh, we've got two positive stories about the effects of alcohol this week. And uh, one of them is, and I want to say thanks to uh, BK Harmony on the Twitter for this story. Uh, the generically named Journal of Scientific Reports released a study can't about – be a real journal. <laughs> it's a real journal called <laughs> Scientific Reports. That, that's as real of a journal as your journaling that we mentioned earlier. <laughs> well, let's assume that it's uh, somewhat real. At least somebody your Keystone together, Journal. Uh, they put together a handwritten pamphlet uh, called Scientific Reports, but uh, they basically these uh, scientists, supposed scientists, uh, did this study on mice. They wanted to see the effects of alcohol on the central nervous system, and what they found was not what they expected. So, and they repeated this study several times. But they, what they, what the study showed was that the equivalent of two and a half drinks in mice helped to actually clean the brain and reduce inflammation of the system that clears out the waste from the central nervous system. And that was not at all what they were expecting. They were actually expecting the reverse that you would see more inflammation. Now, the study also says that past a certain point, uh, the healthful benefits actually go in the other direction. So sure. you actually see after two and a half drinks that the uh, the waste clearing actually degrades as opposed to improves. And I don't think that's a surprise either. Um, now, this is a mouthful of a sentence here, so I'm, just, so I'm probably going to trip all over this. But uh, Dr. Macon Niedergaard of the Center for Translational Neuromedicine at the University of Rochester Medical Center said, quote, except for a few types of cancer, including, unfortunately, breast cancer, alcohol is good for almost everything. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I, I've always heard that for all cancer, it's a bad thing, but, uh, she's probably right. She's a scientist type, but, um, yeah, you yeah, know, anyways. we have a, we have a story a little bit later on, uh, in this list here that I think is funny just to compare to this, because like you said, um, this generic pamphlet versus some other stuff that we've seen, it's just kind of interesting how it goes back and forth with 
what is good for you, what's bad for you. I mean, uh, we're going to find out here pretty soon that eating a half slab of red meat is going to be a cancer cure all or something. You know, it's <laughs> exactly. just, it's going to be great for the colon and it actually cleanses it opposed to stopping it, <laughs> you know, stuffing it up. Yes. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to think about this too, because it kind of goes contrary to what we, uh, what we talked about in that alcohol documentary we did uh, back when Jennifer was on with us, you know, they talked about how much of an effect it has on you with just a little bit of intake. And we even had, you know, Great Britain lowering the standards and everything about how much you should, you should drink. And then, then conversely you have this come up. So it's hard, it's hard to tell. I, obviously it's all based on the scope of the scientific study and who all was included and what data they have there. But it's, I think everybody wants alcohol to be good for you. So we're always going to be, trying to find a study that says hey uh, you can you can at least have a few and be be healthy well and you have to wonder like what was not disclosed like who's funding the study i mean are there alcohol companies behind these studies because that's always a possibility sure uh you know they want something to lean their favor um they do say that actually with mice they have a much faster metabolism than humans so in in humans actually uh what they suspect is that probably the equivalent of two and a half drinks for a mouse is the equivalent of one drink for a human. So uh, one drink, and so have that uh, have that beer at lunch, but then don't drink anymore. Yeah, because that's where people usually stop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> one and done, my friend. Uh, so in another positive health story, uh, craft beer is supposedly healthier than red wine. Uh, California Polytechnic State University released a study. Uh, don't know which generic journal or pamphlet it was released part of, but uh, – <laughs> They said that thanks to less pasteurization, that craft beer is, no surprise, healthier than uh, beer from the big beer companies like Miller Coors. And uh, we talked about this before with Smokey and the Bandit. Back when they released the uh, Yellow Bellies, they weren't pasteurized, so they were more highly valued than their Coors Light or something like that. Right. Um, but they say that in modern beer, craft beer contains a lot more niacin, vitamin B3, and brewer's yeast, which all help to lower bad cholesterol. And then Professor Mike McCullough said that craft beer actually performs a bit better than red wine, and this is surprising, when it comes to de- decreasing your chances of type 2 diabetes and heart disease. I'm surprised about the type 2 diabetes since that's all related to high sugar in your blood. Yeah, true. Uh, and I would suspect that all the sugar and carbs in, al- in beer would probably lend itself to type 2 diabetes, especially the heavier, darker beers. But uh, that's, that's a real surprise. Um, but of course they disclaimed, uh, as always the bad cannot weigh the good when you consume too much. So as we oh, said, just have one, one and done, right? One beer. Yeah, that's true. That, that's, that's what you should do, but nobody does that. But yes, no. uh, it's not a, it's not an excuse to binge drink and none of this is, and I think that's obviously where people fall off all the time is they just think, okay, well, if they even use this as an excuse, they think, okay, well, there's some health benefits and then your mind turns to, I just like beer and you just go with it. <laughs> There's always a reason to binge drink, <laughs> good or bad. Even if your day is just lukewarm, there's, yeah. that's a reason to binge drink. <laughs> Absolutely. So we always see all these changes in the craft beer industry, and the trend lately, I think we've seen around here, has been to gozes and lighter beers, and and not, you know, I think it's kind of a split market. There's some that love the really heavy beers. If you're talking about some of the special releases, especially the big stouts around the holidays, some of those things will be, you know, 15, 20% or, you know, at least above 12. And then we have the really light beers that are three, two, three, four percent and, but actually have flavor unlike the big beers. Well, now they're saying the next big craze for craft beer is going to be uh, non-alcoholic beers. So uh, apparently there, um, there was a brewer that had a, had an issue, a health issue around uh, consuming too much alcohol and basically came to the fact to the conclusion that there are no good non-alcoholic beers as someone who has in the past tried to find a few non-alcoholic beers just to mix, mix it in to say, you know, maybe I just want that beer flavor. I don't necessarily want to have to worry about a buzz or something. Um, there are none, <laughs> there are none that are any good. I mean, any, you have O'Doul's, you have, uh, the light cores, you have, you have any of those and they taste like a bad version of an already not too good beer. So I think it is interesting that there is, actually a push the big guys are doing it too i mean there's a there's going to be a non-alcoholic version of budweiser and corona or actually they already released them in 2016 um there's heineken's doing a heineken zero apparently and so some of the big ones are doing it but it is nice to see 
there are some smaller breweries trying it out. Um, the the biggest notable one, it, I wouldn't call them small, but Brewdog uh, did create the Nanny State, which is a 0.5% beer, kind of in reaction to their Tokyo release that was 18. And we can't get that over here. Uh, if we could, I would try it out just to see if it's any good. Again, just to see what a low or a, a non-alcoholic beer that tastes good would, would actually be like. But basically, this th- there's a whole push to around health risks associated with alcohol, just to kind of counter the other stories we were talking about, yeah. that they want that flavor, but they don't necessarily want the alcohol content that comes along with it. Well, I can get into which ones I would never drink, and that's uh, anything that tastes like Budweiser and Corona minus the alcohol, or Heineken <laughs> minus the alcohol, <laughs> because right. what's the point? I mean, it's uh, I, I know some people allegedly like the taste of Budweiser, and Corona's all right, I guess, um, every once in a while, but it's okay. at least in the... the U.S. version of Heineken, it's got that skunk to it and the skunky taste. Like, I don't understand people who claim to like the Heineken taste. I I think that's more of a stretch than people who don't like IPAs. Like, they don't understand the taste of IPAs. I don't understand the uh, people who like the taste of stateside Heineken. Oh, Maybe I, it's I different. Totally it may be different in Europe where you're closer to the, to, to the fresh source of that beer. <laughs> but it, not here. Any of those green bottle beers to me. I mean, Stella... Same, same thing for me. Yeah. Um, I, I do find it interesting though that they did a little research and found out that thirty three percent of Spaniards and twenty three percent of Germans are already drinking non alcoholic beer on occasion. Especially Germany surprises me. Yeah, when you have a rich drinking tradition, I guess I don't know. I guess I, I think we're seeing, as we know, a decline in alcohol sales overall. It seems like true. Um, so I guess people are trying to imbibe less to be a little healthy. I, I don't think that's a bad thing as long as it doesn't collapse the industry. <laughs> right. And you know, it, it makes sense that they would be motivated to do this if there is a market for it because they do get 1.5 times more revenue because they don't have an alcohol tax. So, Oh, interesting. There's a motivation on their end too. Yeah. And I, I still think we'll probably see more session beers, um, coming here in the next couple of years. Um, better tasting session beers. Yeah. Um, I which so I think it's anything but a good thing. No, yeah, absolutely. And lastly, I just wanted to point out that a Portland brewery has launched a full beer into space. Uh, I think it's funny that they have to note that because, as we know, Nankasi sent their yeast up into space and already did uh, ground control beer. But now uh, Bridgeport Brewing in Oregon uh, sent their original IPA into the stratosphere 22 miles into the atmosphere to coordinate with their 22nd anniversary. I guess my question is, does that give anyone more motivation to actually drink that IPA because I don't really see why I would care that it went out of the atmosphere. Well, is it, I guess I question like how many, how many actual beers did they launch into space? Was it one case? Was it a six pack? (laughs) Yeah, that's a good question. I don't, it doesn't specify exactly how many it was. They just, they had a picture too of just one beer on a wing, but I'm sure they put like a full case (laughs) out there and they said that they uh, ended up finding them about 50 miles away from where uh, the brewery was and they they were all intact. So I guess if you get one of those exclusive beers, maybe there's something special to that if you just really love Bridgeport Brewing, but I think that bit's kind of silly. I thought it was kind of silly when Nkasi did it, but this is all, this is even sillier to me just doing, you know, like a couple of cases of beer. Yeah, and I, I'd like to. Did they say uh, how they launched into space? Was it with like a, a home built uh, model rocket? You know that you can send, you can buy at uh, at a Hobby Lobby or something, or is it uh, uh, a attracted rocket? Or that's a good question. I honestly did not pull that part out of the story. Uh, it may say that in there, but um, yeah, I did. I did not get that one. Yeah, this is uh, this is like a non story story. It's <laughs> it's uh, clever publicity, I guess, to quote uh, Miller Coors. Uh, but I don't, I doubt it. I mean, I guess you want to experiment just to see if it would change the taste at all. Sure. Um, I would expect that it would probably, once it gets that cold, it's probably going to freeze that beer instantly and shatter the bottle. Sure. Um, not to speak of it's, uh, you know, wherever it lands is probably shattered the bottle also. Okay. Um, but... So here, here's the detail. Um, it okay. says they used a balloon to send a cooler containing two full bottles of the original IPA 22 uh, miles into the atmosphere. So I guess you have to get one of the two full bottles that made it. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> uh, that is a definite uh, clever publicity stunt, a story non story. That is a story non story for sure. Well, thanks for listening to yet another episode of Brew Bloods. If you're not subscribed to the show, you should be. It's absolutely free, and you can subscribe anywhere fine podcasts can be found. 
through Apple Podcasts, Google Music, Spotify, or any podcast app out there. Above all, please tell a friend about us. We'd really appreciate it. If you want to reach out to us, you can find us as at BrewBloods on all the social networks or email us at BrewBloodsShow at gmail.com. That's BrewBloodsShow at gmail.com. So for everyone here at BrewBloods, this is Mark saying pros.